What's up you guys, it's 2 Bricks, and you know I was going to be talking about this set. This is the biggest of the January wave of LEGO Star Wars sets, so of course I was going to be doing a little mini review, uh, and as I usually do, throwing in some of my own little spice up modifications and changes for um, just a few things that I think are fairly logical that uh, the set could really use. Um, but I just wanted to do a kind of a mini review at the start here. Uh, it's a good set. This is a uh, very nicely rendered TIE Bomber. It's the first one that we've had in like 20 years or something like that. And um, yeah, it's, it's really nice. Uh, if you've ever built a TIE Fighter from LEGO before, especially in the last five years or so, there's really nothing here that will be too surprising to you. It um, achieves all of the angles that you would expect from a TIE Fighter. It, it does have the, um, the slightly different patterning on the wings here than, say, um, you know, a Darth Vader's TIE Advance because it's got the, the taller gray stripe on the wings, which is cano uh, canonically accurate. Um, overall, it's good looking, and uh, I really like the printed dish at the front, and the minifigure selection is great. Um, the TIE Pilot is nice with the uh, kind of stern face there and the really, really lush detail, especially all the way down onto the, the legs there with the, um, the pockets and such. So uh, always appreciate that. The reason he's holding his gun wonky is because that's the only way I could figure out to get him to sit in the cockpit with his weapon. We'll talk about the cockpit uh, in a little bit. That's one of the issues I have is um, the, the look of the interior of that is a little bit uh, weird to me. Uh, Imperial Gonk Droid is a fun... A uh, little uh, nothing inclusion. It's basically just a handful of pieces, and it's fine. Um, I'm not crazy about the ingot piece for the front here, but I, uh, I haven't actually looked up an Imperial Gonk, and I'm sure that that is what they look like. It just looks weird to me, but um, that one is fine. Um, Admiral Ray Sloan here is the figure that I'm surprisingly most excited about uh, with this set, um, and the reason being is that I I actually bothered to read like the Aftermath trilogy and the comic book appearances where Admiral Ray Sloan appears. And um, I thought it was nice that we, you know, could get a minifigure of a character who's less recognizable uh, to standard, you know, regular, casual Star Wars fans. Um, and this is really nice. And you know, if you don't know the character personally, this just works really well as a standalone Imperial Admiral figure. And so that's really nice. And then of course we have Darth Vader with a new, another new uh, white face here with a more stern expression, which makes a lot of sense. We've only ever seen kind of redeemed Anakin, smiley, I'm about to die face, but uh, this is his, like, what he looks like under the suit when he's being mean. At least I think that's the only kind of version that we've had, but this is definitely a new print, and I really like it. Um, yeah, and he's got these, the scarring on the back of his head like you'd expect to see, because he is, after all, a shriveled up potato under this suit, all gross and mangled. Um, he's got the arm printing again, which is fantastic. Really, really nice detailing all the way through here. I think people have been complaining about LEGO minifigures, especially in the Star Wars line, getting worse and worse. Um, I don't think that's true. I think that they're just spreading the quality out over um, and kind of picking their battles and not giving us um, side characters who only appeared for a few seconds uh, and then putting in a ton of detail and work and new molds and things. Um, instead, they're kind of spreading it out a little bit more, which I do appreciate. So um, overall, it's a nice set. This little uh, side cart here is fine. It's got the you know, couple of extra um, missiles for the, uh, or bombs. They look like missiles, so I keep calling them that. But um, but yeah, you know, it all just works very well. So um, I think if you have always wanted a TIE bomber or a TIE shuttle, because this is very easy to convert into a TIE shuttle, uh, then you can't go wrong. This is a really nice set. It's a little bit overpriced for the amount of pieces that you get, but not to the point where I would call it insane or anything like that. So. Um, that's my review. Those are my thoughts. So the real reason that we're here for this video is to look at the modifications in case you want to make them for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and list what those are, show you the features, and then um, we can go ahead and just kind of see the comparison. So uh, if you do want to go ahead and make these modifications yourself, uh, the instructions for how to do so are available right now for free in my rubricable page down below. Um, there you will find a couple of things. There's a PDF step-by-step uh, -step building guide for how to build this from scratch because uh, I changed a fair amount of the internal structure and it's just a pain to try to explain how to retroactively make those changes. And then also um, you'll have a separate parts list that just shows the pieces that you need if you already bought the set, uh, which is something that uh, a lot of you guys uh, have reported struggling with before. You're not sure where to find the option on Rubicable to export that. So I just thought I'd save you all the time and do the list myself. Um, so that will be available as a separate little PDF download or not PDF, sorry, uh, parts list um, 
I think it's an XML file. So uh, that'll all be in there. It's uh, all part of the downloadables, and it's all 100% free. So go ahead and check that out. And if you want to make these changes, you can do so. All right, so let's get in and take a look at the changes that I made. OK, so the first thing that I uh, made a change to here was the cockpit, because uh, the TIE pilot could not see out of the cockpit before. And uh, I actually think that there is a fair justification for that. So these are the pieces that were used previously under here to support the, uh, the cockpit front pieces here. Um, and as you can see, it's just a solid black piece. And so no, uh, no visibility through there, except for through this teeny tiny little hole at the front, which uh, is kind of funny, actually. Um, and I think the reason that they did that is because when you look at the shooting models and stuff for this, um, this actually has a noticeably darker cockpit than your regular TIE fighter. And I think that's probably in universe some kind of an explanation about, uh, you know, shielding the pilot's eyes from the bomb blast or whatever. But in reality, it's probably just so that Lucasfilm, when they were shooting, um, uh, was it Return of the Jedi or no, Empire, uh, when this first appeared, they probably just didn't want to bother having to put a pilot uh, little, you know, figure in there, a little toy. <laughs> To, uh, to see in case it was ever on screen. So they just painted the inside of the cockpit black. There you go, Bob's your uncle, problem solved. So um, I do think that it is fine that they did that. Um, but since there is a pilot in here, I mean, there's not right now. Let me go ahead and place my guy in here. So yeah, he has to hold his weapon in this weird, funky way if you want to sit him in here. Um, like so. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you want to have your pilot be able to see out of here, um, why wouldn't you? Uh, you have to make some modifications. So uh, what I basically did is I took off the uh, entire cockpit assembly. That was previously, like I said, predicated on uh, placing the pieces around this assembly here. And I've just gone ahead and used these half circle pieces with the hole in the middle. And then another one of those, um, the four, uh, the four by four cylinder, uh, four by four circle plate with hole in to attach this around. So you now have a nice, two by two uh, viewing area that uh, goes through there, a nice circle that the pilot can look out of. And as you can see there, the visibility is just fine. So um, yeah, so that works. And it's a very simple modification. And uh, the only thing that I had to change was uh, instead of this being attached, uh, this eyeball front piece here being attached with like, I think it was like six studs before, it's or no, uh, like eight or 10 studs even. Now it's attached with four. Um, but I've gone ahead and played with it a little bit and moved it around and it's totally fine. It, it's not an issue. So um, yeah, I just kind of supported using the pieces that were already included in the set. I just kind of supported this structure in here using this upside down hinge um, plate piece up here, which just keeps this whole front section nice and locked in place. And as you can see, it goes down over the pilot, no problem. And of course, you can't really see in there because the pilot is black, the interior is black, the windscreen is black. Uh, but trust me, he is looking out of that hole, and he's very happy about it. So that's change number one, and I think that was the biggest uh, thing that really doesn't affect anything, you know, because when this is down, it's not like you can see the pilot sitting in there anyway, but it's just something that was like a challenge for, like, can can it be done, and how would you go about doing it? So that's something I've gone ahead and changed. So that's change numero uno. So for change number two, I'm going to refer back to the instructions here for the way that the bomb mechanism was handled before. And I shouldn't even really say mechanism because it, it honestly doesn't even count as a mechanism in my mind because you literally just place the bombs into these little slots inside of this hole here. And then you uh, push down on the top and you try to release them one at a time. But you really can't release them one at a time because uh, they're too close together. And it's just impractical to try to get uh, your finger down in there and release them one at a time. So you end up just kind of dropping them all at once. Um, and it just doesn't feel super satisfying. You know, it's it's just attached with a couple of these Technic uh, pinholes. And it's just clutching them. And they're just kind of sitting there like this, waiting for you to push down and release them. So I like uh, a bomb mechanism where you can really feel that the things are kind of moving down through the, the ship in some kind of an intricate and interesting way and then released out of the bottom, it just makes it feel more like a satisfying toy experience, right? So what I went ahead and did is I uh, essentially replicated the bomb mechanism that I believe was present in the latest Y-Wing, uh, but it's been used before by LEGO, where you have these, uh, these little uh, black Technic wheel pieces in here. So you can see them spinning through there. And those are the exact perfect size to clutch onto one of these bombs. So I've removed the tails because you know we don't need the flick fire missile tail anymore. You just need the warhead. And then I've gone ahead and threaded that mechanism through and I've hollowed out this back section. So previously this was like this, it was a solid build. And I've actually attached that wheel mechanism to this 
and you can see right there you spin this around and this is how you uh, spin and activate your your bomb channel there so i made the little bomb slot at the top here big enough to just uh, fit one at a time so you can go ahead and load them in sideways like that and if you're careful about it you may be able to load up three sometimes it wants to drop the first one before before you're done uh, but let me see if i can carefully rotate it around and we get our third one in place so there you go three bombs ready to go and then you just spin this around one two three and then it's really simple and it works really effectively and i had to modify the uh, inside of this very much so i had to remove a lot of the internal structure and brace it on the outside with a slightly different technique here for the the curved plates um, but it all works it's very very solid and it, you know it really it really sells it i think and um you know it still looks like it's being dropped from roughly the spot where the actual bomb dropping mechanism is which is right here uh, you know at least it's simulated to be this is where the, the bombs kind of come down and, and fall out um, and yeah, I think it works really well. So if you, uh, the best thing to do it, when you're using this though, it can get jammed. Uh, if you, if you put the bombs in and then you kind of turn it the other way back and forth, they can get jammed pretty easily. So just make sure you pick a direction. So I like to go counter or um, clockwise here and then you just spin it around and they go through and they come out the other side. So, uh, yeah, I think that <laughs> if I could ever get this to go in, there you go. Uh, I think that that's a very satisfying way to approach, you know, this idea of a of a tie bomber using something that feels a bit more mechanical even though it is more clunky and less uh, less well-rounded as a toy mechanism because it, you know more can go wrong with it i just i just think it feels more satisfying to be honest and um and yeah it's still you know you have the uh, the shooters up here so if you're a little kid who just wants to fire something off that's foolproof you can just push down on those little stud shooters right there and those are good to go so uh, all in all i think you get the best of both worlds I think it makes use of this uh, back section here, which to me was just crying out to be used as an activation point for a mechanism, and um, I got it to work. So I'm very happy with all of that. Um, let me see if I can actually pull this off and just show you guys the way that this was achieved. So, you know, you can kind of see in there the cylinder that feeds through into the bomb dropping mechanism. So, yeah, again, relying on these um, half round tiles with the or plates with a hole in them to achieve this entire mechanism. And it just works really well. Um, also, this set comes with four of these new half round jumper tiles, and I absolutely love these. These are so cool. Um, more interesting, cool parts like that. Please, Lego, I absolutely love to see it. So, yep, yeah, there you go. Those are my two major changes. Uh, it's not huge, but I think that it makes a fairly big difference to, I guess, taking this from being more of a really young, kid friendly toy to a little bit more of an adult or an adult, you know, older kid kind of a, a toy um, that just has a little bit more function uh, and just feels a bit more satisfying. So there you go. Um, the other benefit, I think, is that uh, having a bomb slot here as opposed to a large 4x4 hole just feels like this is a little bit more complete and a little bit more covered up. Um, I think that's cool as well. Um, so yeah, those are the major changes. Hopefully you guys like it. And just really quick, I wanted to mention that issue I had with the cockpit. The interior, I think, is just simply too colorful. Um, I like that they included a couple of little uh, buttons here for joysticks and stuff, but the the orange, red, tan, dark tan, dark gray, light gray, and black, it, it just all is too much. There's too many, it, there's not really any kind of sense of organization to it. And, you know, we're used to seeing all these interior shots of cockpits from ties. We've seen them a million times. They're black and they have some red accenting here and there. It's very oppressive, it's very menacing. Um, and this just is, is simply too bright and colorful. I don't like it. <laughs> um, uh, you know, back here, like in the, in the section where you can't see and it's designed not to be seen because it's internal, go to town. That's absolutely fine. But the parts where we can actually open up and access and place figures in there, I just think it's not, you know, it's not ideal. Just, uh, and as Lego builders, we can go ahead and substitute these pieces very easily. You can make these four tan pieces here black and that would al already go a huge uh, distance I think to helping to make this better and even if these dark tan pieces on the side stayed but everything else in the interior was black or red it just would help a lot you know um, it's it's not that I need everything to be 100% color accurate all the time it's just the general vibe is broken for this being uh, an immersive play experience when you want to place your figure in there and you see all of these different stacks of color on top of each other I just I don't personally care for that it's not a deal breaker or anything, um, but it's just something that I think, uh, you know, is not necessary to, it doesn't really help anything. And I think having a couple of additional 
black elements uh, for the for the builder to have to deal with is not a huge deal, especially when I feel like there's more black elements in the internals of this side than there is on this side. <laughs> it's very bizarre. Um, but yeah, that's my main issue with this. Um, I really appreciate getting all of these 1x10 uh, tan plates. I will be using those to great effect in my Hogwarts, I'm sure. But for this, uh, I just think black would have been a preferable solution. So yeah, that was that. Quick note. Um, not a huge deal, but something that just irks me a little bit. Okay, and then lastly, I have a question for you guys. Um, are you guys interested in seeing this converted into a TIE shuttle properly, where um, I remove and add the uh, requisite details, um, secure these wings in the outer position correctly, and then also hollow out this section and turn it into a passenger bay? If that's something that you're interested in seeing, uh, let me know down in the comments because I'm not sure if I want to proceed with that or not. I've, I've kind of like had my fun with this set now and uh, I'm ready to move on. But if that's something that you guys are interested in, if you think it would get uh, give you some value, I do want to hear about it down in the comments because, you know, I, I like to be able to bring you guys things that are useful. So if you think that'll help you get more usage out of your toy here, then let me know. Um, yeah, you know, this is a this is a really nice base for play. It's a really nice starting point for a lot of different uh, tie variants and things. And I think that, um, yeah, I think this is a really successful toy by Lego. So good job. Please let us have more fun play sets like this. Um, we would like to see more spaceships and things Lego. I don't know if, uh, you know, any of you guys out there particularly get a lot of value out of things like the helmets. I personally don't. Uh, this To me, this is the core of what LEGO Star Wars is, and uh, you know, there are some times when we get a whole wave, but we don't even get any really cool ships. So um, yeah, more, more of this, please, LEGO. Very happy about this set existing. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, do let me know about the TIE Shuttle. Um, I think it should be a fairly simple modification process, just a little bit of reverse engineering and uh, removing of some elements and switching out of some internal structure. But, um, but yeah, I already kind of did that for the bomb base, so maybe it won't be that challenging. Uh, yeah, so do let me know. All right, guys, I'm going to get to work on the next video because I have so, 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 so many more on the way, and I'll see you in the next one. May the force be with you.